Larissa. This video is going to cover a lot. So when you have overworked your paper, uh, it gets pilly like an old sweater and it, it starts tearing, most likely because uh, you tried to fix something or you layered or rubbed while the paper was wet. Uh, we can do that for a couple passes before we hurt the paper. Uh, the other thing to consider is what kind of paper you're using. So if you aren't using uh, watercolor paper, then you can easily tear a hole. So I just made a hole <laughs> on purpose. Um, so if you just tried to paint over all that, it would only highlight all the things that are wrong. So pastels are great for this. You can sort of put them on, they create the strange texture that sort of hides all that weirdness in the paper. And then you just want to make sure that you use the pastels in like a couple other places so it looks completely on purpose. And that way no one will know. If you left it just there over the tear, uh, people would just look there. They'd be drawn to that different part. So that's why you want to put the pastel in some other spots too. Think of it as makeup for your watercolor. <laughs> You do want to make sure that your paper is really dry when you're doing this part. Mine's a little damp, but uh, yeah, just make sure yours is dry. Otherwise, you could make it worse. So after you have the pastel there, you can sort of paint over it. Uh, pastel can turn into paint. A lot of people will use pastel and then some water over it to blend. So that's completely normal. All right, I'm gonna show you how to repair the hole. Uh, you can do this on a canvas too. You just need another piece of canvas. So I'm gonna take a, a piece of the same watercolor paper. I just use the glue stick. You can use probably anything you want. Um, I just had a glue stick handy and that's how I would repair it in class. So now there is no hole. And once that's dry, you can paint over it. Now, you could get crazy with sandpaper, you know, to get all those little pills off of there, all that little torn paper. Um, but as long as it looks good, nobody's gonna get that close. And you never know, they might think you did it on purpose. Uh, so this video jumped around a little bit because I, you can see where I started making uh, the damaged area while I was starting to finish the anemone. Uh, so don't mind that. I just figured fixing the hole was probably your top priority over finishing the anemone. So I sort of reversed the video for you. Uh, so you can see that I'm adding some shadows and some color to give dimension to those um, little arms, tentacles. I guess they're tentacles. So the, there's quite a few grays. Um, I tend to go a little stronger with my color because I know in watercolor everything will sort of get grayed down naturally. Uh, so I usually save the grays for later in the painting. And that's what I'm doing now is adding the grays to define, separate, and just sharpen. So I'm experimenting with yellow. I, I see that there's yellow on the anemone. Um, I put it in, but you know, I don't know. So later uh, you'll see that I blend it a little bit. So 
sometimes even teachers mess up their colors. <laughs> I had it and then I destroyed it and then I overshot with too much of this and too much of that. It happens. <laughs> so just know when it happens to you, it happens to everybody. So there's a lot of subtle shadows on the inside ring. And you can see that instead of painting each tentacle one by one right there, I sort of just painted the shadow across a few of them at a time. I know that I'm going pretty fast. I had to speed this up a lot. I probably shot about 30 minutes <laughs> uh, to, to uh, do both things, to finish the anemone and then also um, shoot how to uh, fix that damaged paper. So I apologize a bit that it's going so fast. Right now I'm using a tissue just to blot it because even though what I put in was really soft and light, it was not soft and light enough. Sorry for the little repeat there. Like I said, <laughs> I shot this video out of order. Uh, so I'm getting some watercolor pencils out. Uh, you don't have to use these. You actually have those um, brush pens, and I'm sure you have a very fine pointed one. Uh, that will work just fine. When you have so many tiny things, uh, these pencils just make it so much easier, especially to clean up that edge and get it really sharp. Because if I tried to do that with my brush, most likely it, it would be too soft and it would probably get in the tentacles and then I would be sad. <laughs> but because it's watercolor pencil, you can see that I can melt it and then I can use my paint. It's, it's almost like just a little protective um, barrier. Now I'm using it to separate the tentacles. I keep wanting to call them petals. It's a flower. We'll call it a sea flower <laughs> or a tide pool flower.
when I am uh, painting this, I'm not necessarily thinking about what would be the best order for a, a beginner. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm just doing it the, the way my brain was thinking of doing it. So uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I put that really dark color in the center of the anemone only because I knew I was fast enough to go blend it out later. But I can see how that might be risky for someone who's just starting. So you can be more chicken than I am. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.